All right, Boulder Punch, 53-minute video. You're going to be the big one. Let's go. They listened to feedback from some who found RE7 too scary, decided to go more with the idea of a theme park of horror. This is mentioned in those puppet videos with the four lords. If you haven't checked them out yet, you should. There are versions with English subtitles, but I found them more enjoyable to watch them and make my own interpretation. <laughs> What does any of this have to do with what you're going to be talking about? What are you doing, sir? Route Village. They dart and dash around and are aggressive, so if you don't have a great shot like I do, you'll find yourself missing on the regular. We missed like five times there. I'm hoping that was a joke. It is pretty disappointing that we never get to encounter these horseback lichens, because I was really looking forward to it. And like RE4, thanks to church bells, the lichens leave. Why? Guess it was bingo time. Great answer. We say a prayer to Mother Miranda. The game does have some very minor religious overtones that they don't go overboard with. Don't go overboard? They don't do anything with it. You no, know, even just her short time frame on screen, Elena was really endearing. It's kind of funny that Ethan seems to show much more emotion than after Mia died. How is it funny? It's fucking stupid. This dude who goes to the baker's house despite being told not to, to save Mia, barely gives a shit that she gets popped. He doesn't even ask about her when Chris says he didn't kill her. And then he cares more for this rando villager. Okay, game. Why is everyone dying on me? Why the fuck is this happening again? <sighs> shit! He's much less of a blank slate in this game. Ethan's a fucking washboard of a character. The developers fucking go above and beyond to not show you his face without the use of mods because that's how basic of a fucking character he is. Now we have a different kind of family. Here we have a tall, well-endowed vampire woman with impeccable style. Style? What style? She wears a dress, a hat, smokes a cigarette through a fancy filter, and begins scenes by sitting in chairs and then standing up. Ugh, oh, so gauche. What do we care for bread and circuses? Mother Miranda, I must protest. Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> now, let's take a look at him. What's her style exactly? And don't forget, Mia still has a lot to answer for. Don't forget her role with Evelyn and the connections. Stop reading from the wiki. The organization is Tensu, and I can back up how I know that with in game stuff. Follow along. Company creates bioweapon Evelyn. Company also creates the means of making a serum to eliminate her in case things go wrong. Company also provides the means of making a serum to work on lesser grade bioweapons. D series, as Evelyn is the perfected E series. The company is solely involved in all of this, so they will use their own products. This is a D series serum box. This box contains products bearing a company name, Tensu. Fast forward to Lucas communicating with the company, I quote, Thanks to you guys, it's been about a week since my head's been clear and back to normal. Tensu is the name of the organization, using evidence provided to me by what I see on screen, which cannot be refuted. He always has our back, even if he could talk in circles to Ethan. And while another character who we will cover shortly had received a lot of love prior to the release of the game, the community has been giving the Duke a lot of love, and for good reason. He's a fantastic addition to the series. To keep his background mysterious was the right choice for the relationship he has with Ethan. No, fuck off. I want to know why he's able to be in the Lord's areas, and they don't care about it, and him helping you. And how he moves around everywhere. 
On the note of the model that Domitresque was based after, here's some six degrees of Resident Evil and Kevin Bacon. I don't care about her actress and all that. That doesn't make her character better. Three daughters. The team experimented with having dozens upon dozens of daughters hunting down Ethan. Imagine that. Granted, settling down to three makes for a more cohesive experience and can convey more of their personalities. What personalities? One major concern I had coming into Village is that as great as the love has been for them, would it be scary? Would she have the same presence of someone like Jack or Marguerite Baker prowling through their respective areas? It was less scary and more of a oh shit presence akin to Mr. X. Her footsteps and her heels invoke the footsteps of Mr. X. But in another case of missed opportunities, I feel that Village didn't go far enough with their presence. I think it's one of those cases where Capcom overcorrected with fan feedback. There were a noticeable portion of players who found Mr. X too much and frustrating. Hell, there are mods which you can remove Mr. X altogether. I felt like the team compromised by still having her pursue us, but not to the extent of Mr. X. On the note pursuing, the three daughters... So the answer was no. I can't help but notice that you avoided saying no there. We'll get our right hand cut off. Poor Ethan can't seem to catch a break, no? First his left hand by Mia, has his leg chopped off by Jack in an optional scene, and now this? Ethan uses a first aid med to place it back on. <laughs> hmm, it's almost as if he still had some of that regenerative mold ability in him still. I wonder. Let's give him a hand like and gentlemen. Not gonna talk about the jacket getting fixed. Just gonna pretend that's not there. Okay. The dev team mentioned that with fan feedback, they were going to scale back on the horror. While horror is subjective, they can- uh. <laughs> A giant fetus coming after us. Well, that's not what I was expecting. This stretch of getting out of the basement while avoiding the fetus baby got my heart racing and it was a huge relief getting out. We have a bit of a palate cleanser afterwards with Angie the doll. For note on Six Degrees of Resident Evil. Not gonna talk about how scripted the baby is? Okay. On that note, I did like Moro as a lord. I can't help but feel sorry for him with his appearance and how the others treat him. And he simps harder for Mother Miranda than the tier three Pokemane sub. Mother Miranda, if it's for you, I'd do anything. <sighs> yeah, how do the others treat him? What do they specifically do? What interactions do we see? It is longer than usual. I did see that the game was given some flack prior to launch due to its length. Have these people never played an RE title before? They've always been fairly short, with high levels of replayability and unlockables. I'd rather have a short 8 to 15 hour game that doesn't overstay its welcome than a checklist simulator with 15 hours of gameplay stretched out over 60 hours. I guess this is what happens to people's brains when they play modern Ubisoft titles or looter shooters. And besides, when you look up achievement stats for games, you could just see how few games are ever completed. Resident Evil does have a higher than average completion rate. For example, did you know Portal, regarded as one of the best games ever, myself included, which can be beaten in under a handful of hours, has just a 54% completion rate when looking at Steve achievements. But anyways. Oh. So we're jumping in with the bad faith arguments now. Okay, who the fuck is asking for 15 hours? It sounds like they were just hoping for a longer game. Have these people never played an RE title before? They've always been fairly short, with high levels of replayability and unlockables. I'd rather have a short 8 to 15 hour game that doesn't overstay its welcome than a checklist simulator with 15 hours of gameplay stretched out over 60 hours. What's wrong with that? And have they never played a Resident Evil game before? And that's not an argument. We're talking about this game currently. I guess this is what happens to people's brains when they play modern Ubisoft titles or looter shooters. And for a franchise that's been around as long as it has, I do feel the RE franchise is one of the better fan bases. I guess this is what happens to people's brains when they play modern Ubisoft titles or looter shooters. I'm sorry, what the fuck did you just say? I sincerely hope you don't make the mistake of saying that you're part of that fan base. Cause, <laughs> uh, fuck you. I'm starting to think that you haven't played the games yourself. 
or haven't bothered to fact check yourself here. Because right at Resident Evil 4 is when the game time started going up. According to How Long to Beat, with completion time submitted by users and Steam IDs, and you can click on the game titles for more in-depth analytics, Resident Evil 4 averages out to 16 hours, 5 at 12 hours, 6 at 21 and a half hours, 7 at 9 hours, and Resident Evil 8 at 9 and a half hours for just going through the main story. No extra collectible stuff. I'm wondering if you've played a Resident Evil game before. Because it seems that over time, they stopped being short games. And besides, when you look up achievement stats for games, you could just see how few games are ever completed. Resident Evil does have a higher than average completion rate. For example, did you know Portal, regarded as one of the best games ever, myself included, which can be beaten in under a handful of hours, has just a 54% completion rate when looking at Steve achievements? But anyways. <sighs> Portal and Resident Evil are two very different games. But since you want to cherry pick examples, I will be very happy to do so in kind. Did you know that the Stanley Parable has an 80% completion rate, which can be beaten in just under an hour? Also, I really couldn't help but notice that you didn't show what Resident Evil 8's completion rate is. So don't worry, I'll do it for you. You said Portal had a 54 percent completion rate and that Resident Evil 8 has a higher than average completion rate as of writing this right now September 5th 2021 at 2 29 p.m. Eastern Standard Time US Resident Evil 8 has 68 percent on casual 58 percent on standard 21 percent on hardcore and 12 percent on Village of Shadows. So comparing to completion of standard difficulty, I guess Portal has a higher than average completion rate as well. And you and I both know that a good majority of the Hardcore and Village of Shadows completions are players playing after the other difficulties first. So potentially four stats for one person. Maybe don't talk about completion rates, sir. I knew there was a reason why you didn't show the fucking Resident Evil completion rates. That's something that really stands out. The inconsistent nature of how the mold impacted each individual. For example, how the serum worked for Mia and Zoe, but didn't work for Jack. How did the serum work for Zoe? Evelyn killed her if you picked her. Or did you forget about that? Besides, Mia does mention that Ethan is special, and what she means by that, we still don't really have an idea. Perhaps the serum had no effect on him. He's special because he's magically a mole person, my guy. That's what she means by special. Evelyn literally spells it out for you. He's entirely made of mold and can't die until the plot needs him to, as far as the story is concerned. Because you can die. That's the fail state of the game. I know, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? 